students attending selective schools in the UK often come out with better results at GCSE. But to what extent are these differences due to factors that schools can select their intake on? And what are the effects of selection? Researchers at King's College London investigate. In the UK we have these three different types of school. We have state schools which are non-selective, we have state schools which are selective, also known as grammar schools, and then we have um, private schools and these are fee-paying schools. And these different school types reportedly set children on fairly different academic trajectories. We often see selective schools kind of dominating the tops of the league tables. But in this research, what we wanted to find out was to what extent that is because schools are adding some kind of value to the student's education, and to what extent is it because they merely select the best students. So we wanted to account for the factors that schools uh, use to select their students. So that's things like academic achievement and um, general cognitive ability um, to see whether um, there were any differences between children attending these three different school types. And we found that once you accounted for these factors, there really were very little differences between the students attending the three different school types. Put another way, um, if you took a bunch of students who were fairly similar in a lot of things like their academic achievement and their ability, um, but they just went to these three different school types, the state non-selective, state selective and um, private schools, they wouldn't, there wouldn't really be any achievement differences between these students. The second line of research that we wanted to look into was the extent to which selecting students on certain things actually created average differences between them. So we know that, as I said, schools select on certain things, but we know that these things like academic achievement and, and ability are substantially heritable. So that means that um, inherited DNA differences contribute to differences in these traits. So if we're selecting based on heritable factors, do we see any DNA differences between students attending different school types? So to look into this, we created genome-wide polygenic scores. And these are um, scores which are created by taking DNA from each person in our sample and looking to see how many genetic variants they have which have previously been associated with educational attainment. So somebody with a high polygenic score would have many of these genetic variants and somebody with a low polygenic score would have fewer of these genetic variants. We found that those people who attended state schools which were non-selected had lower polygenic scores than those students who attended selective schools. So those are our grammar schools and our private schools. And in terms of the implications of this research, showing that there are genetic differences between students of different school types doesn't have any necessary policy implications. But we're showing here that students are, are different from one another. Um, and that is in part based on inherited DNA differences. If you're selecting on factors that are known to be heritable or genetically influenced, then while you're phenotypically selecting, you'll also in a way passively be genetically selecting your students. It also shows that children are different and we should embrace this and we should think about education systems that kind of try and maximise the potential of every individual student. Let's, let's have a discussion about genetics and education. The DNA revolution is coming. Polygenic scores will get even more predictive over time. So this is the perfect time to start thinking about the real implications at a societal level. Let's get teachers on board and parents on board and schools on board and policymakers on board and start having these discussions.